than every project that I took on. Software development was honestly an edge. It gave me capabilities, resources, and understanding that put me ahead of everyone else that was trying to compete with me on specific projects or things that I have been after. Uh, it has allowed me to set up architecture that allows me to scale and grow outside the normal capabilities of an average person. In this video, I want to talk about Claude Code. I want to explain how I use it to build out this e-commerce application that I am working on and some of the other work that I've been doing. But I want to show you how I use Claude Code as I build out applications and some of the structures and ways that I'm going about it. Okay, this might not be perfect, but this is my approach to things. I build within Python, Plotly Dash, in a reactive style development. Uh, but let's move into a diagram. Uh, this is a separate application, uh, which which is a whiteboard which allows me to just drop in websites or uh, pictures and I can kind of draw on here and uh, I just have it organized in a way where I want to kind of show you something. So like I said, uh, we're going to start with this e-commerce application that I'm building out. So this is an enterprise system. It requires a lot of moving parts. Uh, you got to think about the architecture uh, from a uh, database perspective, storing uh, useful information, uh, what values, uh, what tools, what components, how the UI needs to look. There, there's a lot of things that is going on. For me, I wanted a central place for me to be able to list products and for them to automatically be published to any social media or e-commerce platform that I would like. I want to automate the whole social media process. I want to automate uh, the listing process for products. I just want it on eBay. I want it on Amazon. I want it on my own application. And I want this application to live in a way where it tracks everything. It's smart enough to understand, hey, this product sold on eBay. I need to take this listing off of the Stripe payment system. I need to take this listing off of Amazon, you know, whatever the case might be. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, I have a few things that I have already started in building that out. I have something that is a separate application which kind of goes into this and this kind of gives an idea of how you can use AI in your application. So right below, uh, this is a, a gold mining bot that I built out. Uh, this is an application that uh, has two AI agents living within it. Uh, you have a Google Gemini AI and then you have a Claude AI. And these two agents, they are in a Petition. Uh, they are given scraped uh, uh, listings uh, from auctions that are currently taking place. Okay, each one of these auctions has gold uh, within the title of the auction, and both AIs need to classify the item from the pictures if it is really gold or not, like the metal, and then it will compare its value on the auction with the current gold strike price and it will start the process to bid on it if it is a good purchase and uh yeah it's just a, an experiment for me to kind of uh better flesh out uh this understanding using ai's seeing where gemini and claude uh, would struggle or really do well as a classification system or as a bidding bot or how far can i take this you know what i mean so Ideally, I acquire the inventory uh, from that gold bot uh, application. The gold gets fed into the store application that I have. It will list it on eBay. It will list it on Amazon. It will list it on my own site or wherever else I want. I just need to build it out. Um, and then, yeah, it's going to track all the sales and hopefully I make a profit. But ideally, you just leverage AI in the process. Uh, but prior to doing that, how do you build out a full enterprise system of that scale that it can continue to grow and you don't get um spaghetti code um 
or hallucinations as you try to build this out. Um, so for me, there's a few things that I'm doing here. Uh, all this on the left-hand side, okay, this is all documentation, all right? This is dash documentation boilerplate. Uh, the middle one, uh, this is dash main time components, uh, which is just the best uh, front-end library for the dash framework, in my opinion. Uh, but basically, what I do is I uh, use these resources and the way that we have structured it is they all have uh, a LLM's equivalent. Uh, what an LLM's equivalent is, uh, just for example, we'll click on the dash main time components and we can see that this is just marked down. So these are marked down text, uh, understanding and project knowledge of the page. So for an AI, it doesn't need all this fancy UI UX design. An AI performs better on just raw understanding through the LLMs.txt. You can transfer the equivalent project knowledge of a human looking at and understanding the documentation so that an AI can also perform. Now, I want to jump into the Dash e-commerce application. This is the IDE that I'm working within actively to build out my e-commerce application. So a little sneak peek behind the scenes, but what I want to draw your attention to is the structure that I am using as I go about building this out. I just want to give you a quick breakdown of how I build and innovate in 2026, okay? I already know Plotly Dash, but if you do not learn the fundamentals before you dive into this type of structure, this is not a beginner level. Uh, this is, hey, I have worked in the industry for at least two years. I think that's reasonable. And then now I'm ready to take it to that next level, okay? If you're looking to build out something that is super complex, that enterprise level, uh, try to isolate it to individual applications as best as you can, okay? Don't create one master application that has everything you want to pack into it. Try to break it off into reasonable things, okay? I have documentation hosted in its own application. I have this e-commerce application hosted as its own application. I have the whiteboard application hosted as its own application. None of these and the projects is, they, they, they all relate, they all work on each other. I use them as tools within my own workflow, but it's not one master application. It gets too large. Isolating your projects, I create within the project architecture a dot clod folder. The dot clod folder has a few folders within it. I have an agents folder, I have a tasks folder, and then I have some important files here. Okay. We'll start off with the basics. Okay. A settings dot local dot JSON. This sets uh, rules and permissions for what web pages the AI has access to. So whenever you go about prompting and you're like, hey, I need you to look up pip install Python dash uh, doc, and I need you to integrate a two window, whatever the prompt is, okay? The AI, whenever it gets that, it will want to search that website, okay? And with this included, the settings.local.json, it will not need to ask you for permission to go about searching the documentation it just makes things streamlined the most important file that you can have for cloud code though this is the instructions and the instructions.xml is formatted in what kind of looks like a html style uh, but basically if we scroll to the top you can see that this XML file gives a project with some key information, name, description, what version, the tech, and then you set coding standards and rules uh, for specific application and implementation of sections within the application. So you have agents which are also defined in this so that the actual AI has an understanding of what it can actually use. And then you have documentation references, uh, you have other important information information that is all located in the instructions uh, .xml. Uh, a context I'd read me uh, file, but just for uh, Claude and for the AI that you're working within. The architecture.md for me primarily just lists all the files within the application and it gives architecture understanding through diagram to hopefully help AI understand what it is and like the schemas and just the facts and architecture of 
of what I'm building out. So outside of that, uh, we have agents. This folder allows me to create AI agents. It is uh, similar to a markdown file, but at the top it is structured similar to a YAML file, uh, where basically you're defining a name, a description, and what tools the agent has access to, and uh, what model uh, the agent can be assigned to. And then when invoked, it has to run through a checklist, and it basically gives some basic reference files and useful context for the agent in its specialty. So, for example, I have uh, callback specialists uh, because Dash as a framework leverages callbacks as the design, and uh, it's easy for that to be a recurring issue in development. So you want an agent that specializes in understanding callbacks and the callback structure of the application and all that information. Uh, then I have one that focuses on eBay. I have one that focuses on debug or database. I have one on UI UX, a Dash main time component specialist, or a pip docs specialist, you know? Uh, create as many that make sense in the architecture that you're building out. If you are using a lot of a component, uh, for example, uh, I am using uh, Glide Grid. As I experiment with this new component, uh, I built out a specialist that allows me best understanding on how to use the component and integrate it into my work. Uh, so anything that uh, comes a struggle, uh, the AI will update this file and it can spin it off as a sub agent uh, as it goes about building. Building. So this allows and frees up uh, project knowledge for Claude, and it allows you know these sub agents to take on project knowledge and then report back to what is an orchestration, uh, and that's where you, as you're the master, and then this is uh, Claude code uh, which is integrated in the IDE. And uh, I just ask it for you know specific requests as I go about building out. I try to make them focused and I give as much project knowledge of things that are gonna be on the page as possible. And I will you know basically prompt of a prompt that I would create. Uh, you have access to a .clod folder to aid within the development, uh, but I'm working within the pages products details and I'd like to improve on the design and the UI UX and leverage dash main time components and dash doc uh, can you please fill in the blank? Uh, that is a good prompt. And I would also include uh, these LLM.txt of whatever extra project knowledge or information would be useful for the AI to understand. Uh, so dash main time components is located right here. And then if I was also to go into my own documentation, I could copy that as well. So that is how I would go about building out uh, the integration and leveraging a good prompt alongside building out a implementation in this application, for example. So the best way for me to share with you how I leverage AI APIs in my work is just by showing you. Uh, so right here for the e-commerce application, if I want to upload a new product, I just go to my upload page, okay? From here, let's say that this mask, right? I'd like to sell this mask. I have it and I want to list it on all the e-commerce platforms on my application and just automatically do it. So here's the mask. We're just going to upload this image and if you analyze analyze it, then the AI is going to classify whatever the product is, and it's going to associate a price for the product, and it's going to equate um, other factors. For example, this is saying, hey, we checked all of the database and we found a similar product already listed on the application. Are you sure that you want to list this as a new product? From this page, I could actually just say, you know what, you're right. I'd like to just click on this and I will change the quantity to now it's two and I'll update. Okay. Alternatively, I could create it as a new listing. So this is a protective measure to make sure that I am not um, just creating blind listings. And if there is associated already to a product that is listed, uh, then instead of creating a new listing, then just change the quantity. So it makes sense. Uh, but after that, then it gets sent to the next page. This is a form which gives all the context information for the product. The AI automatically filled out all the information for me. So it saves me a ton of work and time. All I need to do is snap a picture and then bam, it's for sale. Everything's already done for me. So as you can see, it labeled it correctly. This is my business. These no longer exist, but Breath was the brand and it classified this 
correctly as an FFP3 mask. And the brand is Breath. It is also a 10 pack and it picked up a lot of the important information uh, from the product itself. Uh, it labeled it in the correct category. It said that this is a new product, which is good. Uh, and it labeled the brand. If we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that it sets a price range. The way that I set up the AI to classify this is after it understood the product, then it researches the product on other e-commerce sites, and then it comes back with a range that the product could be priced at. And it will start at the higher echelon of the price and then work its way down. Uh, but for this one, I think it's because there was already one in the database. It said, hey, you know what, let's just kind of move this to $24.99, uh, which honestly is a pretty good price for the product. Uh, I think that fits. Uh, I was selling them for about $20 back in the day. And yeah, I, with inflation, I think $24 sounds about right. So other than that, it did fill out the keywords and uh, the key features. And it also uh, predicts uh, dimensions on the product. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to narrow this and make this a little bit better, uh, but so far it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Uh, it gave us an eight by six by five box to put this in. And then the cheapest shipping is $6 and 18 cents. Um, so yeah, with that, it labels the weight and it applies that price and to the product on the database uh, so that it is aware of for what shipping will cost. Other than that, uh, you need a warehouse uh, to store all the products that you're going to be uh, managing through your e-commerce platform. So for me, I also need to equate a warehouse location and warehouse schema for how things are going to be positioned and how are they associated to products. So that's still being worked out, but ideally uh, you just click on a zone and then it gets applied to the product. Uh, so now this warehouse location is assigned to this bin in the product. And then, yeah, you just kind of place it and then you come back and get it whenever the item is sold and you know where it's at. So uh, that's kind of how I use uh, AI API uh, to automate the form process, the analyzing of the product, the pricing, and, uh, and some of the tools that I'm building out. So I know we covered a lot in this video and wrapping it up, uh, we dove into LLMs.txt, the documentation that I built out, trying to structure myself at the end of the year to just get organized, but also structure the project knowledge that I learned this year in a way that can accumulate, uh, that can build up uh, with AI and LLM as I continue to grow my career. It's so important and trying to figure out your own system is so important. And I highly recommend to other developers that are diving into software development and enterprise systems and the likes of uh, just trying to build out a career in this space. Uh, the second thing that we dove into uh, was Claude code. Uh, we integrated in the CLI. I shared with you the .clod folder and how I am building out agents within that and also the important files and systems that I am leveraging within large enterprise applications as I go about building them out. Uh, if you saw anything that was different or useful or something that was new to you, uh, please like and subscribe. It, it helps other people learn and creates more innovation. And I, I, I hope that this was able to provide you something uh, that was valuable. Uh, outside of that, the last thing that we dove into was AI API integration. Uh, this is really exciting because you can integrate AI capabilities and specific components or automated processes. Uh, so for example, the AI classification of products, uh, filling out the form or managing specific functions within the application as it's hosted and as it goes about uh, creating more complex uh, ways of interacting uh, with uh, other resources, tools, and just trying to provide a better interface and user experience in the stuff that I build out. With that, thank you for watching. Build something amazing. And if you're looking for more resources or understanding, check out the links in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.